at the church he attended as a child. During Katrina, he relied on his faith to guide him through the most severe of crises. I definitely consider myself to be religious and spiritual. You know, this place, this church, is where I grew up. I served as an altar boy here. And so when Katrina hit, the first thing I did and the last thing I did, and sometime during the day, uh, I was on my knees praying uh, because I knew that we needed some extraordinary help to get through this. The mayor comes almost every Sunday. <laughs> Not always on time, no, but I he's guess. here. You know, I had my moments when I said a little prayer and said, why me, God? I was the 60th mayor in the city's history. And I mean, you had to wait until the 60th time for me to have this type of challenges. I really feel like God had a plan for him. He said to me one time, he said, Salitha, you know, I really, I really didn't ask for this, but it's here and I just have to do it. As any leader, there are some days they love us and some days they don't. There are some days that people are enamored with the mayor and think the mayor is doing a good job, and sometimes they think he should be doing other things, and that's a good thing. <laughs> Nagan's emotional response to Hurricane Katrina captured the sentiment of the city at the time. Five months later, he set about becoming re-elected by focusing on the black vote. This city will be chocolate at the end of the day. He immediately began championing the cause of recovery, which in New Orleans, recovery was about 90% in the black neighborhoods. This city will be a majority African-American city. It's the way God wants it to be. And I remember when I saw that, I said, OK, this is it. There's his strategy. The, re the re-elect Ray Nagin campaign has officially begun. Ain't gonna let Katrina. The first time he got elected, he was not the champion for blacks. No, <laughs> no he was the champion for the businessman, which is the white man in general down here. I think that uh, people focus on that Chocolate City speech, and they basically hear an anti white message or an anti-Asian message. And that's just not what was intended. I really thought I needed to send a signal to everybody that every segment of this community was welcome back to this city. So I motivated some and upset others. The black people, that's just what they wanted to hear at the time. It was just trying to get us riled up and to vote for them. Back in office, of all the challenges facing Nagin, the most difficult and perhaps politically important was rebuilding the Lower Ninth Ward, which had become the symbol of New Orleans suffering. A large percentage of the city's African-American community lived here, the area worst hit by the flooding. Said that you can never go home again. Told you you can never go home again. So here today, Empty spaces sit like tombstones in place of the homes that once stood there. You know, it's even worse now than it looked right after Katrina. Because even though the water killed everything, the homes were there. All these were houses. These were full of people. Brenda Dupre has lived in the Ninth Ward all her life. Only now, after four and a half years, is her house being rebuilt with the help of St. Bernard Charity. We had one of the prettiest houses. We really did. I'm surprised there's still work going on, but I'm, I'm still a little surprised that it's still so desolate. This is overwhelming to me at times. I know it's coming back. I know it's coming back. You know, but I'll be 60 years old. You know, it's, it's a different time. You know, I, I am not never satisfied until we're, we're totally rebuilt, but I knew that this would be one of the last areas that would be rebuilt uh, because of a couple of reasons. It was the most devastated, number one. Number two, the Army Corps of Engineers uh, did not complete the necessary levy structure work that's needed until this past hurricane season. So it really wasn't safe to rebuild on this side. In a nutshell, Ray Nagin campaigned 
on bringing back black neighborhoods. And after he got elected, he said, you're on your own, kid. We really don't think about him, you know, because he's like a non-factor in our recovery. We built all these houses with volunteers from all around the world with very little government help. Like, this is beautiful, but you go two blocks, it's empty. It's always hard to see any devastation from Katrina, but I think this, at some point in time, this will be a vibrant community again. The job was overwhelming for any human being to begin with. I don't believe that he did anything malicious. He just was overwhelmed. The thing is, people suffer. We got people still trying to get back. And I don't see them getting them back. Oh, I should forget you. The feeling of disappointment resonates beyond the lower ninth ward. Disgruntled New Orleanian Karen Ocker published a satirical cartoon book about the Chocolate City speech and what it promised. My frustration is that people have still not returned to New Orleans, and it's, what, five years after Katrina. And our mayor promised early on that um, every New Orleanian would be able to come home, yet his actions did not ring true to that. Across all communities, Nagin's perceived failure to deliver on his promises is reflected in the polls. He's got something like a 90 to 95 percent negative rating among whites and around a 60 to 70 percent negative rating among African Americans. That's pathetic. That's worse than George Bush at his worst. That's worse than Richard Nixon at his worst. What is going to be the one standard that people use to measure the success or the failure of Mayor Nagin? It will be the rebuilding of the city after Katrina. Now, a lot of people felt that the recovery could have been something that happened in a matter of months. But in reality, it was always going to be a five-year work in progress. He probably could have managed expectations better. I don't know if anyone could have managed the public's expectations because the public basically wanted to get back to what they had prior to Katrina as quickly as possible. There was no way you could deliver that with 134,000 homes flooded and damaged. It just was impossible. We're four and a half years into this. Over 80% of our population is back. We've got an economy that is very, very strong. We have the lowest unemployment rate in the country. When you contrast that and go study disasters of this magnitude, it takes, an, on average, 10 to 15 years. We're in year four, going into year five. So we're well on our way, with the hope that at some point people will recognize the good work that we've done. Coming up, regrets, I, I, don't, I don't have a lot of those because I pretty much make decisions and move on. It's time to go, y'all. Megan starts to say his goodbyes.